Hi everyone, so today I thought it would be interesting to talk about all the different kinds of media that I've used in my art throughout the years, like as a beginner and until now, and the things I'm currently experimenting with and what I've found to be the best media for me and kind of how I found that and how I'm still finding that because nothing is really set in stone, everything is always kind of evolving day by day, whether it be really small changes in the media you use or how you use it or really big changes. So it really, it's a very personal subjective thing and people use different media all different kinds of ways because um, you can use, say, watercolor so many different ways. You can do really fast, immediate washes with bold colors and let everything kind of bleed together and just have like a very um, a very quick and immediate way of working with it. Some people work very slowly and build up the, the glazes and color of watercolor so it actually looks like it's been done with like oil paint or something where you can like really get in there and render stuff, but it's really just watercolor that's been built up and up and up. There's just so many different ways you can use everything and I just want to talk about all the different stuff I've used throughout my art journey and the things I'm using now and why and just just the whole art media chat. So if you are into that sort of thing, you'll enjoy this video hopefully. And the thing I'm actually painting while I talk about this was done for an assignment for school. It's based off of... it's supposed to convey fear. It's based off of irrational nightmares that I have. Like, I always have these nightmares about tornadoes and really tall looming objects. Well, the, the tall looming object is more like real life fears. Wherever I stand near a really tall building and look up, I just feel really uneasy. Giant clouds make me really uneasy and like huge mountains being underneath them just stuff like that um and also so i have so i have a lot of nightmares about tornadoes and waves for some reason giant waves also freak me out in real life just giant waves are just so terrifying to me i don't know why maybe because i can't really swim that well so that's what i'm illustrating here and i'll show you kind of like the process i went through to make this um throughout the video but i guess the first thing i'll I'll say is something that got me really really serious about art or I wasn't even really like that serious but I guess when I started my YouTube channel um, just Copic markers I was so into them I just love the idea of using them I would watch videos of people using them over and over I just really enjoyed how they made things look so clean and polished and I loved just the idea of collecting them all and how there were all different kinds of colors and um, just like the way it looked on the outside, I just really liked Copic markers. And even now the smell of a Copic marker and flipping through my really, really ancient Copic marker drawings, um, the the smell of the ink on the page just brings back all those like nostalgic memories of me just loving that media and never really wanting to use anything else. And now I haven't really touched them in like a few years, like I've never done an actual finished thing with them and I don't even use them in my sketchbook anymore because they bleed through the paper but I'm definitely still holding on to them because they just bring back those memories and they just remind me like why I was so um they, they just give me that feeling of me as a young artist just being so excited to make pictures and I was always starting things and finishing them like constantly because I wanted to film videos and get them uploaded if you ever seen my old content you'll definitely um, see what I mean by the Copic markers because there were so many of them and another thing I used before that was pencil crayons because they're just so accessible and I, I feel like I still use those a lot throughout the Copic marker phase um, but it was definitely a mainly a Copic marker thing wow I'm on my channel now and that was six years ago it's actually I feel like it should be more 2013 14 15. It's been seven years, as of February, oh my gosh, my channel anniversary is coming up. February 15th is when I posted my first video. Okay, oh, right, okay, so then after the Copic marker phase, I got really into digital art. I was using my dad's really old tiny tablet, I think it was called like a Graphire, a Wacom Graphire? And I was using my mom's laptop and trying to make things, and then I was so invested in it, I actually got a Wacom Intus Pro Small for Christmas, and I just loved the digital art. I was just so obsessed with it for so long. And then I would still do some Copic marker stuff in between. But the digital art, I just, 
I just really loved. And I didn't really film a lot of traditional stuff I'm seeing. I don't know if I still did it. Like I was of course sketching. I, I can see kind of peppered in there some gouache. I tried out a little bit of gouache, but I was using it like you use Copic markers. I was just kind of blocking colors down and trying to blend like I would with a marker. So I wasn't really like using the gouache like like it was gouache. I was just trying to like force it to behave in a way that it wasn't really meant to behave. Um, I was doing some like pencil drawings and stuff like I, I've always done pencil sketches and like who hasn't really um, a pencil never failed me I just I think it's so versatile and I started to experiment with ballpoint pen sketching a little bit too and that's something I do a lot now actually I just think it's so much fun um, and I still did lots of Copic stuff and pencil crayon was I think it was it was kind of like 60% Copic 40% pencil crayon and it was for so long. I didn't realize how long this was going on for, like three years of me just loving the Copic markers and the digital so much. And I still love digital art. I there there was just something about it that was so magical to me at the time. I, I can't even put my finger on it. Like the fact that you can just just zoom in infinitely and do as many details as you want and just work with all these color palettes and everything just had this like sense of of magic to it. I, I don't even really know how to describe it. But it was like Copic markers, pencil crayons, digital. Those were like my three things. And then I got more into the mixed media sort of thing and I did my first like actual watercolor illustration and if you know me now I use watercolor all the time. It's my favorite thing. Um, and digital. Those are my two favorite media. It's, it felt a little bit off. And then I started using like so many different things. I think I was trying to appeal to all the people who liked art challenges on YouTube. So I was using like crayons. Um, I even did nail polish, which <laughs> I just still can't believe I did that. Um, and and I, I would use the odd media here and there, like ink brush pens I started to get really invested in a couple years ago. And I still love them and I I don't use them in final illustrations because I don't like having a black outline. I feel like I can make things look so flat so quickly and so easily with a uh, by outlining everything in black. It's just not something I, I just more prefer to do it in color because I can make it look more dimensional that way and it's just a little bit more fun for me but I love I love ink illustrations. I think they're so beautiful and Inktober this past year actually got me into that a lot more and that's another media that I, I really love now. I remember just absolutely loving, I completely forgot what I was going to say, what was it? Oh, um, colored pencils for sketching, so like Pilot Color Eno, I don't, I haven't said that name in so long, I don't use those anymore, the lead breaks too easily, they're just not worth it to me anymore, I don't, I don't know if I would recommend them because the, the barrels themselves, I'm so heavy handed, I break it so easily, so their actual lead holders aren't, they don't work well with the lead for me because I'm so heavy handed. And um, I just like the Prismacolor color race for those erasable colored pencils. So that, those are what I would recommend if you're heavy handed because they don't snap as easily. So I started to use colored pencils to sketch. I was still very much into digital, loving digital. Um, and then I slowly started to experiment more with watercolor. And watercolor was something that it was kind of a slow burn. It, it very, very slowly but surely made its way into my my like normal art routine and it was because I was just not that experienced I couldn't make things look that good on paper um, once I started to kind of get out of the Copic phase that's when I started to just not really enjoy um, I think they were just drying up so quickly it was expensive I just it was hard to get the right color because you needed to have that exact color and I realized with watercolor and other materials you can mix whatever color you want and you don't have to rely on what you have because if you have the primaries you have every single color so i started to really get into watercolor started to sketch with it more and i think one of the the turning points was actually when i was still in the youtube artist collective um that was a while ago well actually not too long ago but i did a big watercolor piece and i realized this is actually i really like this, this media and i need to keep um pursuing this and even before that i did um some mixed media stuff i even did a watercolor tutorial but i I'm not seeing, like, I don't remember being 
super happy with any watercolor thing I, I, I did until I did that one. And then I realized I need to keep doing this. So I just, it slowly, slowly made its way into my art routine while I was still doing digital and everything just kind of started to shift for me once I started school. Yeah, once I started school, everything kind of, kind of shifted for me and I started to use gouache. I actually got some gouache for my birthday because I asked for acrylic gouache because I was dead set on having acrylic gouache, but I actually got a different kind of gouache than I asked for, but it, I didn't care. I was like, oh, it's still gouache and this is a really good brand. And I realized, oh, this is actually the kind I should have asked for and I'm glad I ended up getting it because I realized how nice it is. It was the Holbein uh, primary set of gouache, so it comes with magenta, cyan, and yellow, white, and black. They actually discontinued it for a while and they repackaged it. It's really confusing, but that's my favorite gouache set. I would recommend it if you want to get some nice gouache and you want to be able to mix any color. That's the perfect set, in my opinion. I started to get better at gouache and watercolor and then I just started using ink and I started to kind of embrace the traditional media again because when I was so into digital, I, I kind of neglected it um, because I wanted to be like... I just like the idea of being a digital artist and I still like digital art itself and I still like the idea of being a digital artist because there's something about it that I just it just really inspires me but I get sick of it if I do it for too long and that's why I like to do digital and traditional and I've actually neglected digital lately because I realized that one of my favorite ways to work now is to do a watercolor illustration scan it in and then paint on top of it digitally and kind of bring it to completion um, on my iPad or on a tablet or whatever you want to use. That's actually working really well for me right now. And it's kind of making me lazy with traditional though. Like I feel like, oh, I just made a mistake. It's fine though, I can just fix it digitally. But I don't know if that's laziness or me finding a way to work smarter and not harder because I think that's also important. You shouldn't torture yourself if there's an easier way to do something and to make it look the way you want it to look because there's no such thing as cheating. As long as you're not stealing someone else's art, like you're just using the tools you have in front of you. I did a couple of failed watercolor pieces here and there. Um, I started to really experiment with different media because school was really pushing us to, and I just think it was um, just really great for everybody, honestly, to be pushed to use stuff that they normally wouldn't use. And that's when I got to like my very experimental um, I started to try all sorts of stuff because that's what they kind of told you to. Man, I need to do more gouache stuff. I feel like I hit a sweet spot there with gouache and then I kind of like, I'm just, I'm just looking through my old videos to kind of summarize all of this because my videos document my art journey um, so well because I've been doing it since I was in grade 9 and that was so 2013. So I've been doing this for 7 years and it's documented my entire process, which I think is kind of cool to have. I'm really glad I have a YouTube channel and I can kind of look back and notice the, the places where I was actually doing a lot better than I thought I was because now when I look at things, I can see the flaws more easily and the work I'm doing right now in a couple years, I'll be able to look at, look at this work and see even more flaws more easily. And that's that's a good thing because you can if you can see the flaws more easily, you can also pick out what is actually, what are the good parts about it. And, okay, once I stopped using um, Winsor & Newton Cotman watercolors and I got the Shinhan, Shinhan, right? I always mix up Shinhan and Schmincke watercolors. And I know I probably say that weird because I don't know exactly how to say it. I have a Canadian accent. It's hard for me to pronounce other, other um, certain words, I guess. But once I stopped using Cotman watercolors and I switched to the, the, I almost said Schminke again, the Shinhan PWC watercolors, I highly recommend those. They are such big tubes and it's such a good price if you can find them locally and pick up some open stock ones, because I don't really see them on Amazon. But once I started using those, I think it was a kind of another turning point. It wasn't the supply. It's, it's not like the art supply made me better. It was just easier to use because for the Cotman watercolors, they would dry and it took me so long scrubbing to get the color off. It just like really impeded my workflow. So using the, the Shinhan ones, um, it came off of the pan so much more easily. And I actually, um, seven months ago, wow, that's so much longer than I thought, got the Schminke Horadam watercolors. 
and those are really great but honestly I still use the Shinhan ones because I like them both for different reasons. The Shinhan ones have more of an opaque quality. They feel more, um, they feel like thicker in a way and I kind of like that. And the Schmincke ones are so pigmented and they, they bleed into each other more easily. So it just depends on what I'm doing and what I want the final look to be. So, I guess to summarize all of this, my current favorite media, if you had to burn all my art supplies and I couldn't use anything else, honestly, uh, I can't really, can I loop digital into that because it's a toss up between digital and watercolor. Um, my top favorite ones are watercolor, digital, and gouache and pencil, but I use them all together now and I kind of use it in a more mixed media approach. And once I stop putting a constraint on myself, because I, I used to think that if I started something in watercolor, I had to finish it in watercolor and I can't use anything else on top of it because, oh, I'm, I'm cheating, like you're not supposed to, you're supposed to be able to, to make it look good with just watercolor and I obviously am not skilled enough to do that, so this is cheating, but it's not. I don't know why I ever thought that. It's not like I really believe that, it's just I felt a sense of self-defeat where I had to take out the white gouache and co cover up a mistake I, I, I did. Or if I fixed something up digitally, I thought, am I lying to people? But you're not, because you're just you're just using the different mediums that you have. So that was a kind of, that was a really long-winded way of saying that I like watercolor and gouache and digital and pencils. Because I use pencils on top of things and I'm starting to use them in a way that isn't to fix mistakes and it's to enhance areas of the drawing and to add texture. Texture is another thing that I rejected in digital art. I was like, I don't want any texture. It looks weird. I don't like it. I want it to be nice and smooth. And now I'm like, bring on the texture. Why wouldn't I want that? There's just so many things I've learned about media and the ways I think about it and the way I treat it. And it's an ongoing process. I'm sure in five years from now, I'll be doing something completely different than this. And that's why I like to make these videos. And I, and I also like to hear what kind of media you use and if there's anything you used to be obsessed with that now you can't even imagine using anymore. Like I can't imagine doing a Copic illustration. I should do that. I should do a Copic drawing just to see like... The only thing is like you can't use anything else with it besides Copic proof ink. And like if you use pencil in it, it'll just clog the nibs. That's just why I'm not a huge fan of marker art anymore. But if I use it like I use watercolor, it might work. Like the channel Juicy Ink, she uses Copics in a way I really, really enjoy. So I might do something inspired by her art or the, her process. But that's a tangent and that's for another day, me using Copic markers again for the first time in like a few years. I really hope you got something from this video and realize that it's okay to experiment and just because you're really set on using something now, it doesn't mean it's the best possible thing for you. And also, you don't have to use the same thing every single time. I'll, I'll switch it up depending on what I'm doing, and I'll use more pencil in one, or I'll do something in just gouache. It really depends on what you want it to look like, and how far you're willing to push your art, basically. Because using new media can be really, um, it can be really intimidating, but it can be worth it in the end if it's your new favorite thing. So thank you so much for watching, I can't believe it's February already. That's just crazy to me, um, and I'll see you in my next video.